Hi guys, I hope that you are all doing very, very well. Today I am doing my May wrap up. So I actually started reading again in May, so you'll see that a bunch of these books I decided to uh, DNF if I wasn't loving them because I really didn't want to put myself in a slump. So I think I read seven books and two had two DNFs. So we're going to start out on a bit of a low note. And this is Fierce Fairy Tales by Nikita Gill. This was one of my five star predictions of the year uh, because I so loved Your Heart is the Sea, uh, also by Nikita Gill. And this is one of her other works, which is a poetry collection as well. But this is focusing on retelling well-known fairy tales through a feminist and sometimes queer lens. So it sounds like it would be amazing and right up my alley. However, these were really forgettable for me. I read halfway through and then we moved and then I was trying to find the page to take it up again and I could not remember any of the things that I had read. So I went back to the beginning and I started reading it again and I was like, no, I just don't. They're really not memorable for me and so if you were going to choose one or the other to try to get into Nikita Gill, I would highly recommend Your Heart is the Sea, and I would give this one a pass. This is certainly not one of my better five-star prediction picks. So next up is one that I picked up from the library before it closed, and this is Defy the Stars by Claudia Gray. I think that I was sleeping on this, or it was a really popular YA novel um, many, many years ago, I think. Um, but I freaking loved this. So this follows Noemi, who is a fighter pilot, and when she is in a battle, she sees that one of her friends' like pilot ships is injured, and she rescues her friend and takes her into like this floating old ship that has been abandoned for a long time, and that's where she meets Abel, who is like one of the, if not the highest um, AI mech robot in like all of the galaxies ever um, and she basically takes control of him because he is like vowed to help humans so even if he doesn't want to help her he has to help her so then they start off on this journey together and I have a thing for human AI like romance uh, I just find it so fascinating I really recommend it for anyone that likes quick sci-fi that where it's not too intense um, but it is still good world building and the plot is really solid. So I will definitely be reading the second one in this. I gave this four and a half stars. Um, it's like a guilty pleasure uh, YA AI human romance. So if that sounds at all up your alley, I highly recommend. I can't wait until the library is open again because I know that the library has the next two in this trilogy. So fingers crossed that... Um, I can be reunited with the sequels very, very soon. Okay, so the next book is Bunny by Mona Awad. This one was a dark book that I had been anticipating. It might, I think it is a five-star prediction for me as well. And this one fell a bit flatter. I ended up giving this three and a half stars uh, because it didn't quite reach its full potential because this is about a main character who is in a, in a English program and there happen to be like this clique of girls that call themselves bunnies and they may or may not be doing like culty things together. She gets sucked into it and it's kind of like, is she an unreliable narrator or is this really happening? Is the cult stuff real? Is it not? Like you don't really know what's happening. So I think along the way it was kind of between a three and a half and a four and then the ending I just like didn't understand. I was kind of just like, huh, yeah. It didn't really cinch it for me, so I wasn't a fan of the ending, and that's why it's a three and a half, so yeah. I know that a lot of people have mixed reviews. They love it or it just didn't gel with them. I'm one of the ones that it didn't really gel with, but if you know a book that is like this book that you think I would like, I would really love to hear that down below because um, it caught my attention right away but I'm just sad that I didn't like it as much as I anticipated. So after that, I read The Cardigans by Cole McCade. This is Criminal Intentions season one, where uh, Cole McCade has basically written a crime novel series mimicking a crime TV show where same detectives, but they solve different crimes for each book. So in this particular story, we are following uh, two detectives who first meet each other because 
this is their first case working together. So we have like a, an icy, cold, kind of misunderstood, quiet character whose name is Song Jae-yoon. Uh, and then we also have kind of the gruff, um, like bulky weightlifter kind of detective who's like really gruff and like just curmudgeonly. And his name is Malcolm Kalaji. And basically they solve this case. I wasn't really in it for the case. I was more in it for like the development of their relationship because it is a very, very slow burn romance. And I gave this three stars. I wanted to continue because I wanted to see what was happening with them. And then I realized that there are 18 books. <laughs> I'm not gonna wait like 18 to 20 books for a slow burn romance. That's like the slowest of burns. So personally, I'm not going to continue on even though I thought that the first novel was quite good. Uh, Cole McCade is just a really excellent writer, but that is just too slow of a burn for me. So then after that, I was like, I need some female, female love in my life. So I picked up The Henna Wars by Adiba Jagidar, and I ended up DNFing this. The story focuses on two girls who were friends in their youth, and then one of them moves to the high school, the other one, and it's basically like, oh, like, I remember you, but it's insta-love immediately, which is not my jam. I think, like, Insta love is one of the tropes that is given so much slack when actually insta love is just poor character development. Um, that might be some hot tea, but <laughs> that's just how I feel. Um, so I really hate insta love. And then also just how the characters speak and how they're written, I think was a very juvenile writing style for me personally. So I just decided to not continue on even though I really like the story, it just sounds really cute because they each set up like competing henna stands and yeah, so it's, it, it, I'm sure that it would have got cuter, but I just didn't want to keep going. So the next book I finished in May was A Buddy Read with Jordaline. Um, I will leave her links down below. We buddy read all the time together because we have very similar tastes and we like that dark dark stuff. So this is The Woman in the Window by AJ Finn. I feel like everyone on booktube probably already knows about this, but I picked it up for three dollars at my local ob shop like a long time ago. Um, and this is dealing with the most unreliable narrator we've I've come across in a very long time. So the main character is agoraphobic where she doesn't want to go outside and it is caused by a very huge trauma that has happened in her recent past. But because she's agoraphobic and she doesn't have much going on in her own life anymore, she takes to watching her neighbors through her window, which leads to her thinking that she sees a murder take place across the street of a woman which she has recently met. So overall, I gave this book four stars because I think that even though I managed to guess some of the ending and there was a villain monologue, which is like not my favorite, I really enjoyed reading it. The chapters are very short and I had so much fun making my way through and guessing with Jordan Ryan what was going to happen. Uh, sometimes I was right, sometimes I was very, very wrong, and I really enjoyed the reading experience. I so next up is My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moschweg. This one is one that I bought again, like I think in the beginning of the year before quarantine. And this is dealing with a main character who decides she's kind of over life and she just wants to sleep for a year. Literally take a year of rest and relaxation. And I mean, definitely while I was reading this, I was like, you know, she's not that wrong, honestly, um, because she just decides she wants to take a year and kind of zone out, go back to like the very essence of her kind of leave all the drama, all the clothing, all her furniture, all her job, like everything. And of course, it's like a super privileged position, right? Because she has enough money stored away that she could do that. And then also she has like someone to help her and like yada yada. So yes, this is like not realistic and it's a very like privileged viewpoint, but she does bring up a lot of 
interesting topics for discussion. This book was going to be A4 for me, and then the ending happened, and it's so unfortunate because I feel like if the last maybe 30 pages had just like been ripped out and hadn't happened, then I would have probably given it a four, but I was so mad about the end that I think it's a three and a half. Um, so it just didn't need to happen. Like the book is set in 2001, and for anyone that knows what happened at 2001, um, there was no need for that. We don't need that, okay? Like, there's no need. Especially because this book is published in 2017, so it was a choice. Deliberate choice. Um, yeah, so I question why the author did that. Why? If you've read this and you have any thoughts to why the, why the author placed it at that specific time, uh, do let me know. And the last book, which I finished in May, is The Memory Wood, another buddy read with Jordaline. So this, again, is another mystery thriller where we're following a young girl named Alyssa who is kidnapped at a chess tournament. And she is taken to this place which is known as the Memory Wood. And she's kept in a basement there. And a boy keeps visiting her whose name is Elijah. So she is trying to play this game where she can get out of the situation but not upset him to the point where he becomes like kind of useless to her. I did like the second half, but the first half was much stronger for me. So that's why I give it three and a half stars. I did really enjoy it, but I didn't enjoy the second half enough to make it a full four stars. Um, yeah, but I am just really appreciative that I'm buddy reading with Jordaline again. I'm not hitting any slumps. I'm in a really good reading mood. I am in the middle of a book right now. And I will talk to you guys about that for my June wrap up, but I hope that you all are doing so well. Please talk to me in the comments if you have anything else to share or say. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys in another video soon.